So I think people enjoy, you know, instant access to what they want. They want what they want and they want it now. And I think video, even over and above uh, written features online, usually does a lot better. And that's because there's, there's zero effort. They can just sit in front of their phone, tablets, you know, um, even TV if it's on YouTube, and they can just access videos and, and watch it. So it's a pretty effortless way to get information um, and to be entertained. Mm. Because we're, um, we are Media House, we have our own uh, videographers, and they conduct interviews. So we do live interviews uh, with clients, and that does extremely, extremely well. So what we would do on social media, on our channels, we would just broadcast um, you know, a post that would say on Tuesday, the 10th of October, um, at 4 o'clock, we're going live with um, this big mining company. And if you want to watch, tune in. And yeah, and then we'll do that and we do it from our um, offices in Joburg and people love it. And we actually only started doing that since COVID began. It was something we always wanted to do, but we we're always just so busy with print and so many other things. I mean, COVID hit and we went completely digital. We went big into video. So it definitely is an option to consider whether it's a state agency or marketing for anything. Okay, so I love two things you said. I mean, I love everything you said, but two things <laughs> caught my attention. Uh, live and uh, interviews. I've been telling agents for a long time that they've got to be shooting client testimonials. Um, and it does not have to be a box office production. Uh, no. You know, um, Patty is very good at that. You know, she will be, she'll, she'll balance her phone on a tree and be swinging in a swing and <laughs> that's the video. It's like, it's but quite... people love how natural it is. Exactly. And, um, it's just liberating. You know why? Because people can relate. Yeah. Because no one's perfect. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to have two separate microphones and all that. Just stick your phone up on a tripod, sit together with your client, have a chat, shoot it, upload it. Just just be churning out the content. So I love that. I would love some agent out there to just get excited about live and say, you know what? I'm going to go live once a day for five <laughs> minutes and just have a little rant or share an opinion or show a house or something, just live every day for like three weeks. And I'd, I'd love to see what kind of traction that picks up in their business. Anyway, social experiment. But the, mm. the beauty of that, though, is I think everyone loves to see what everyone is doing right now. So if you're outside a house and people are like, okay, I wonder what, I'll use my mom as an example, I wonder what Patty is doing. Oh, she's outside 12 Rupert's or where she lives or wherever else. Um, and, oh, I like that house in the background. And and um, so, yeah, I mean, but even with that, yeah, you've got to take other things into consideration. Like we've all had a laugh, I'm sure, with the hardy dars in the background of live ads, that uh, live videos that went um, up during COVID and dogs barking and everything that comes into it. But like you said earlier, you know, it's the, the humorous aspect of it. So. Yeah, and I think people are almost more forgiving with live. If they know they're watching yeah. something live, then they know this is raw and I'm not expecting anything uh, fancy. What is the big picture of uh, a social media strategy? What should an agent be trying to achieve? Consistency is absolutely key. Mm. Um, I would say at the very least, an agent needs to have at least one post up every single day. Now, this might sound daunting to some and not so much to others. Um, remember, we do have scheduling on all of these accounts, so you are able to schedule posts. So a good tip for agents would be, if because I know they work around the clock all day with clients, the last thing they want to do is come home and have to sit and figure social media out. But to put two hours once a week aside and just schedule posts for the week is going to save them so much more time. Yeah, great idea. And have a plan, you know, sit down, let's say on a Sunday night, jot down your plan for the week of what you want to discuss, what you want to put out there each day on a post, and then sit and schedule it. Um, but if we had to look at a strategy, I would definitely say, if possible, because I know this would be at the expense of each um of each agent for their account, but you're definitely going to need some sort of a budget for social media. Not for Twitter, not for Instagram, not for LinkedIn, but absolutely for Facebook. Um, it doesn't have to be a big budget. I would say anywhere from about 1,200 Rand to 1,500 Rand a month. 
if possible. The reason why I say that is, is because remember, however many posts you put out, scheduled posts or adverts, because you can do ads, you can do sponsored posts, um, Facebook Manager then works out how much it's going to cost so that you stay within your budget for the month. So the more posts you put out, the less exposure each one is going to get if you're going to spend a minimum amount of money. Um, so I always think a good starting point is about 1200 for a budget. Then, like your daily posts will go out, sit once or twice a week, uh, schedule um, sponsored posts and adverts to, to go out on um, your Facebook profile. I think there actually is also a link to Instagram. So if you just activate the link, that automatically go live on Instagram. Yeah, so right. it's a bit of a freebie. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I would definitely say start with deciding on a budget, start with scheduling. Um, so okay, so if the agents um, have some sort of a profile on a website for whichever company they're working for, if they're working for themselves and they've created their own web page, then whenever they do a social media post, they really should always include the URL to that website or their, their, um, their landing page. And the reason why I say that is, is because you're guaranteed, not that everyone's going to click on that link, but you're guaranteed that whoever does is going to have a better understanding of who you are and you're going to be more rememberable. Another great one is to do polls on social media. So you could ask, a, but keep it super simple, like have a nice enticing image and then say, say something on the lines of, um, are you looking... Or what were your experiences with your last sale or purchase or lease? And you, whichever, and then you can have a poll that says, good, fantastic, not great, for example. Um, that's one way to get people interested and to comment, because people might feel, hmm, I've got more to say about this, I'm going to comment on this post. And then you have their name and a link to obviously their Facebook profile yeah. or Twitter. Love that idea of, of running polls on your social media. Go to your business page. It's not your personal page, your business Facebook page. And uh, on the left-hand side here, you're going to click Publishing Tools. Okay, a little complicated because Facebook actually have taken this off. Uh, this is their new kind of look. Top right-hand corner, you click Create a Post. And you will probably see a different interface than this. You're going to see the new one. Unfortunately, I've already clicked use the old post creation tool. There's a little button there that says, like, if you don't like the new one, you can still use the old one. Click use the old one. And then this is what you see. When you click these three little, the, the ellipsis here, these three little dots, you will then see the poll option. There it is. Create a poll. And then I'm sure you can figure it out from there. Uh, and to run competitions, if there's a if an agent has a bigger budget, run a competition. Give you know say um, to people, for example, what was your best? Um, I can't be very mundane here, but what was your best experience in buying a house? And whoever has, or what what was your worst and funniest experience? And whoever has the best answer, give them an, a night a night away at a hotel or something like that. Yeah. Depending on how big your budget is. But what's nice is that encourages people because you can add a whole lot of things in in that form of marketing. You can say, okay, uh, comment, then invite a friend to also comment, and then share this page on your social media. So that's an incredible way to get exposure. Um, and yeah, whoever comments, you obviously have their names and can get their contacts. So. Yeah, and, and, and one of the, the things you can do is, is negotiate with a local service provider, like a restaurant is a good idea. If, if you're wanting to get um, contact details of people who live in the area, you know, give away um, a lunch at a local wine farm in Somerset West, for example. Exactly. And then people who live in the area are going to be the ones because they want to win the competition. Um, but often what you can do with restaurant owners and the like, coffee shop owners, is they will actually give you a voucher for free and you say, look, what I'll do is I'm going to promote your restaurant really heavily on my social media for the next two weeks yep. in exchange for a free lunch for, for two. Yep. Negotiate it. And, 100% do it because that's cheap marketing. Yeah. Them. I mean, imagine if they had to pay a PR agency to do that. It would probably cost them forty to 50000 so, Yeah. Yeah. And, Absolutely. And from your perspective, the competition's not costing you anything. So... 
and you're getting now people commenting that you know or in the area and then you could follow up say hey you know great to meet you can i keep in touch you're obviously a homeowner in the area how long have you been around you can just start connecting and keeping in touch exactly. with them. yeah yeah so that's a great idea thanks stacy yeah. and whilst it's daunting at first it's not going it's always been daunting and like i said earlier it's a snowball effect once you get into it and you start scheduling it becomes a whole lot easier and also confidence i think a lot of the time i think agents may lack self-confidence online um but just keep posting just keep doing videos force yourself to do it just take yourself out of your comfort zones because eventually it'll become absolutely it'll be so much fun and they'll enjoy it and once you start enjoying it you'll be a lot more natural and it will get better i mean one of the roadblocks is how do i how does my content attract attention i mean i'm putting stuff up but how do i get people to click on it and that yeah this has actually been why i think the secret recipe behind that is is using as you were saying earlier email marketing to drive traffic to your social media content i don't think we need to rely on the algorithms and um facebook or youtube in in with, with video to to be promoting your content so that all the views you get are going to be organic views yeah that's what, true. what i've told agents to do is when you have shot videos for the week maybe at the end of every week or every two weeks or once a month, whatever you think your, your database can handle, you take the driving of the traffic into your own hands and you send an email to the database and say, hey, everyone, this week's videos are hot off the press. Uh, three great little videos this week. The first one is on uh, 10 hacks to pay off your bond quickly. Second one, and then in brackets, uh, seven minutes, so they know how long it is, and then the YouTube link. Now, if, you, if you're if you building up a database of people, like we were saying earlier, nurturing your leads, if you now you've got a database and you're sending out bulk emails, you can drive 10 times the amount of traffic to your YouTube video than you would have just by putting it online. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah thank you. Cool. Uh, I hope I was able to help. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Stacey. Nice to thanks meet so you as well. Nice Okay, bye.